Dear viewers of the Algerian International Channel, welcome to this special talk show in which we host His Excellency, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and expatriates of the Syrian Arab Republic, Dr. Faisal al mikhtar Your Excellency, the Minister, welcome and thank you for accepting our invitation. Thank you for welcoming me and allow me to extend my highest consideration to all the media in the Republic of Algeria for following the situation in Syria and for the interest granted to this visit. This is our duty, Your Excellency. You have come to Algeria carrying a message from President Bashar al-Assad to his Algerian counterpart, Abdel Majid Tabun. Would you please inform us about some of its content and how was your meeting with President Tabun? The meeting with His Excellency President Tabun lasted more than two hours, and this indicates that the meeting was cordial and friendly and reflected the depth of relations between our two brotherly countries. The message I carried from His Excellency President Bashar al-Assad was a message of friendliness and cordiality, through which President Bashar al-Assad expressed his highest esteem for His Excellency President Abdel Majid Tabun and for the Algerian people for all what this great people has given to Syria since the onset of the crisis in 2011 until now. Algeria's position was firm and was a sparkle in the region's dark sky. You know the support received by armed men, killers and arms dealers in the region, and the political and media misinformation that took place. Therefore, the message of President Bashar al-Assad was a message of cordiality to the Algerian leadership and the Algerian people. There is an explanation in the message about the latest developments that Syria has gone through and the situation prevailing in the region. The political movements which are taking place now at various levels, either with the neighbors of the Syrian state or as part of Astana and as part of the Syrian-Russian relations, or the visits paid by several Arab officials over the few last weeks to Syria and the visits we also paid to Arab states. And the Arab countries. In conclusion, I can say that this message was yet again, in addition to the phone call held between the two presidents less than 10 days ago, a message of cordiality and a message of consideration and coordination of the two countries' positions, which are similar on many situations. We can say that they are identical on many aspects and in the political analysis of the positions of the countries of the region and other countries. Of course, we had to reiterate our thanks and appreciation for the efforts made by Algeria in relation with Syria's position with regard to the summit held in Algeria and the sincere efforts that Algeria deployed in this field. Speaking about bilateral relations between the two countries, between Syria and Algeria, and we may link it to the recent developments, Algeria's position towards the events in Syria has remained unchanged for 12 years. How can we benefit from this position to establish and push for a sustainable political settlement to the crisis in Syria, as well as to build a new balance in Syria's relations with its Arab surroundings?
I would say that the events Algeria went through during the Black Decade were a prelude to the events that Syria has been experiencing since 2011 until now. There was a Western focus and another focus from terrorist groups armed and financed by external powers. And there is no point in mentioning them now because who financed terrorism and armament in Algeria is the same who is financing terrorism and killing and the policies of interference in Syria by some parties. It is the same. However, I believe that the will of the two peoples, both in the Syrian Arab Republic and the Algerian Republic, united us. It is doubtless that Algeria's experience should be a useful experience for us, too, in our struggle to achieve the objectives of the Syrian people, especially that the enemy is the same. Therefore, I can say that coordination throughout the last period, I can call it the Syrian Black Decade too, was a friendly and strong coordination and we were benefiting from Algeria's experience in all these fields. Thank God, the relations now are good and have continued to be what they were because the two peoples found themselves in the same trouble and facing powers hostile to the two countries. <laughs> We have recently noticed a remarkable breakthrough in the relations between Syria and a number of Arab countries. How does Damascus see this change and this reconsideration, if we can put it that way, carried out by Arab countries regarding their relations with Damascus? Actually, I don't want to say who reunited with whom. In the Arab world, our main concern is that our relations be normal, that our relations, at least among ourselves, be clear and based on a common action in order to face up to common challenges that all Arab countries are confronted with. Therefore, I say that the visits we pay to some Arab countries and the visits paid by some Arab officials to Damascus had the same objective and same goal, which is normalizing relations among Arab countries. Why relations are normalized with all countries of the world and are not normalized with us, the concern. Because the stronger the relations among Arab countries are, the stronger our international relations will be, and we will be more capable of of overcoming the challenges we are facing together. Evoking this point, I touch on the visits that President Bashar al-Assad made to the United Arab Emirates, to the Sultanate of Oman, and the visit that Your Excellency made to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia recently. Are there any initiatives put forward by our Arab brothers regarding the situation in Syria? And if so, what is your position towards them? And what are the Syrian requirements for the implementation of these initiatives? I don't think that we impose conditions on our Arab brothers. All Arab countries know that what happened to Syria could happen to any Arab country. Syria was the beginning. For this, we say that these visits came based on the will of all the parties to turn the old page and open a new page in Arab-Arab relations. We all found out that we are weak in the face of these challenges that are targeting us one after the other. If they take down an Arab country today, tomorrow will be another Arab country and a third Arab country. So we understood that our common interests and our development and putting an end to the genuine aggressions perpetrated against the Palestinian people and our Arab countries, the challenges imposed from abroad, the dictates imposed by some foreign countries and the red lines drawn by some foreign countries on our Arab-Arab relations should not exist as part of our respect for our sovereignty and as part of our respect for our freedom and in choosing the development path that we must all follow. This serves all Arab countries. Therefore, I do not want to talk now in detail about what happened in these meetings, but we found more Arab understanding and we found more Arab understanding on the nature of what we all went through and that this may be reproduced in any place in the Arab region. 
قد يتكرر في أي مكان من المنطقة العربية. هل يمهد هذا؟ Does this understanding pave the way for Syria to attend the next Arab summit? أولا هذا يذكر. Since there's been a lot of talk about this point. This reminds me of the talks that started about Syria ahead of the Algerian summit. There were important visits for us and our Algerian brothers between the two countries and among Arab countries. President al-Assad made a statement about this summit in which he said that the importance of this summit rests with holding it in Algeria. No, no, the president said that the real value of this summit rests with holding it in Algeria. Thank God, in fact, Algeria made tremendous efforts, and our position was that reforming relations among Arab countries is the real way to make of the Arab League or the joint Arab cooperation the beneficiaries. But before correcting the relations among Arab countries in their bilateral dimension, this will be almost impossible. I mean, the Arab League will remain, but the disagreements will remain within this League. The problems that the League suffers from in implementing its programs and policies will remain. The other issue is that it is not possible for Syria, which believed in the Arab dimension in all our issues, and which calls for the unification of Arab countries and their positions, we cannot accept to be a country responsible for division among Arab countries. So if this issue, the issue of the presence of Syria in the Arab League, relieves the Arabs from some problems, so we don't mind sacrificing Syria for a short period of time for the sake of Arab reunification. لوقت قصير من أجل إعادة لم الشمل العربي نأمل أن تكون الخطوات العربية القادمة We hope that the next Arab steps will be in this direction. And we appreciate that most Arab countries are beginning to understand that the path of joint Arab action is the only path that preserves our dignity as Arabs, our rights and the rights of the Palestinian people, and protects us from the attacks of Western countries that blatantly interfere in our Arab positions. Air strikes have been recently launched by the Zionist entity on vital sites in Syria. How will you deal with this matter, especially if it is repeated in the coming period? We are dealing with it. We are dealing with it on the political Especially that they cause casualties. Israel Israel is known for committing many crimes. Can we, for example, talk about the challenges facing the Syrian people in isolation from what is happening now on the Palestinian scene? The occupation soldiers attack the Holy Al-Aqsa Mosque, kill Palestinians inside the mosque, and perform some rituals inside Al-Aqsa Mosque. It is known that Al-Aqsa Mosque is a pure Islamic mosque, 100%. So why are they doing this? They are doing this to destroy Islamic monuments, to demolish Al-Aqsa Mosque and express their hatred for our history as Arabs and for our rights as Arabs. Therefore, I say that when we support the Palestinian people, we respond to these Israeli attacks. When a fighter from here or there responds to the attacks, we in Syria carry out activities to support everything that serves the confrontation that will eventually lead us to achieving our aspirations. Whether it is in recovering the legitimate historical rights of the Palestinian people, and we are in favor of the unity of the Palestinian people in this field. مع وحدة الشعب الفلسطيني في هذا المجال ثانيا فيما يساهم في إعادة Secondly, in what contributes to returning the Syrian Arab Golan to its mother country, Syria and the remaining occupied lands of southern Lebanon So we respond We do not rely much on propaganda in this regard كثيرا على البروباغاندا في هذا المجال لكن إسرائيل تعرف وتعي but Israel knows and understands that the Syrian response to such attacks will overtly and inevitably come at a time when we want this response to take place and at a time that serves us and does not serve Israel. But now we also have other challenges, as you know the challenges of terrorism and interference in our internal affairs. 
the American occupation in the northeast and the Turkish occupation in the northwest. And this sometimes leads to taking all these equations into consideration. One last question, so as not to take much of your time, Your Excellency. In the light of all what you mentioned, how do you see the future is We're very optimistic. The future will be in our favor. When we met a while ago with His Excellency President Tibun, he said that Algeria is standing by Syria. Isn't this enough to arouse optimism? Not only in Syria, but throughout the Arab world and the Arab countries. How did you find President Tibun? He was great. We met for more than two hours and discussed all the developments, and we found that we have similar and identical views on all the developments that the region is witnessing on the one hand and that the world is witnessing on the other hand. So we thank His Excellency President Tibun for this opportunity. We and Algeria, since the era of Emir Abdel Qader Al Jazeera and before that in history, we've always been one and we cannot be divided. We wish the best for the Algerian and Syrian peoples. Your Excellency, Minister of Foreign Affairs and expatriates of the Syrian Arab Republic, Dr. Faisal al mikda you are a distinguished guest to us. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Dear viewers, with this, we come to the end of this show. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.